in developing the idea of the grid, we now move on to Joe Corbett, <coughs> who's an engineer, uh, who worked with the Irish Utility, the ESB, and uh, <coughs> he's worked also in the Georgian State Electro System based in Tbilisi. He joined Mainstream Renewable Power in December. He's going to talk about the super node. Joe. Good morning. Um, the brief <coughs> was, if we're going to build a super node, where are we going to start and how are we going to do it? So, um, please. Oh, no, no. Okay. So the first thing that we needed was a node. As Gunnar rightly said, we had the HVDC, we have cables, uh, but we need a node. And this is technology that exists today. Uh, if we were to build a node today, this is how we would do it. Um, of course, Gunnar will rightly say there might be better ways to do it, but they're not here yet. And he tells me that they will be soon. Uh, but this is how we would do it today. The numbers that we use there, 400 kilovolts collector system for wind and 320 kilovolts DC uh, are there simply to allow to have no transformers between the two. So we direct conversion from 400 kilovolts AC to 320 kilovolts DC. Um, this is our concept for the node. We would be able to connect uh, 400 or four gigawatts of wind to this node. So what are we going to do? We want to connect a wind farm off the coast of the UK, which will have four or five gigawatts, to a wind farm off the coast of Germany. In this particular case, we just considered one with uh, one gigawatt. And we connect to uh, the UK 400 kilovolt system, we connect to the German 380 kilovolt system, and we connect to the French 400 kilovolt system. We allow not only the wind to be delivered wherever the market is, but we also allow trading between the three grids. This is important. Thanks. So this is our super node one off the coast of the UK, which connects, as I said, to the 400 kilovolt system. Um, and also connects north and links in with some of the ideas that people are talking about of having a uh, uh, HVDC connection all the way down the east coast of the UK. Here's our super node two. In this case, we don't develop the whole node yet because at the moment we only have one gigawatt of wind there. So we connect it as a three terminal uh, connection on a HVDC link, later to be developed as a full supernode when more wind comes, or another connection, perhaps to Denmark or somewhere. So, unlike Gunnar, I decided I would actually have a go at the costs. Um, and I needed to compare it to something. So I picked the Nornet connection, which is, has recently been uh, commissioned, and is in service. And I know it's in service because I checked um, on the web yesterday, and I see that they're actually trading on it. So I looked at the cost. It's a, it's a uh, 700 megawatt link. It costs 600 million euros. I assumed a capacity factor on that link of 80%. I'm not exactly sure what the capacity factor is, but I assumed that probably 80% would be good. And from that, I, can, I calculated the amount of megawatt hours that could be transmitted on that connection in one year. Divided one by the other, and I got a cost a relative cost. So it's 122 euros uh, per megawatt hour, per annual megawatt hour. So in one year, if you could get 122 euros per megawatt hour on the link, you would pay for it. So then underneath that, you'll see various uh, mainstream scenarios. Mainstream one, two, three, and four. And they're all the, the only thing that changes in them is the amount of wind that's connected. So in the first one, for example, we only have two gigawatts of wind connected, but we allow, with a capacity factor of about 50%, four gigawatts of trading on the line in addition to the two gigawatts of wind. And you can see that the numbers are very favorable in comparison to Nornet. In fact, by the time we have six gigawatts of wind, that's one gigawatt of wind in Germany and five gigawatts of wind off the UK, uh, connected on the line with a 40% capacity factor. Um, and we still allow the trading between the three uh, big systems. 
we actually bring the costs well below what the costs for Nornet connection are. And as an engineer, I always like to see these things graphically. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you very much for your, um, again, very, very concise uh, introduction into this uh, area of our topic.